Hello there, Pisces. Michelle B. here. I'm going to give you a tarot reading looking at what to embrace and what to leave behind for the next 12 days. Then I'm going to look at your abundance, your prosperity, your money stuff. And then I'm going to look at your love and connection stuff, what you have to consider for the next 12 days. I like to look a little bit about what's like take a snapshot of where you are at this point and ask the universe, ask the cards, what is the next step, best next step forward for Pisces going forward. So looking at your golden uh, Art Nouveau, golden Art Nouveau cards here, uh, for what to embrace, we got the Eight of Wands, but it did come up in reverse. And then what to leave behind, we've got the uh, Magician, which came up in the reverse. The reason that I'm talking about these two at the same time as what to embrace and what to leave behind, because it's not as just straightforward as, like if you look at these two cards on the surface, it, it looks like uh, you're leaving behind control over what's gonna happen. And instead you're just you're just going into a period of accepting that there's just gonna be a period of quiet. And I guess that is kind of what it's saying on the surface, but it's it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's looking, taking the perspective, whereas in the um, in the present or recent past, you were feeling as though you were the person that was going to be the you alone, with your with your brain, with your brain power alone, was. Um, going to control your destiny when it comes to like love and connection when it comes to your income right but it is there is the reality is that it's a little bit more complicated than what we do ourselves in western society we're very like independently minded we're like okay especially in the united states it's like you are on your own when it comes to building your own wealth and and um you got to make decisions for yourself and you're the one that's responsible for what you what you decide to do who you choose to connect with and all that but as I was saying, it's there's a di there's a dynamic happening between you as an independent individual and your environment because we are we are all whole, a whole universal entity. Um, there's been in the recent past you were meditating on what it is that you desire. I know that that's something. Yep, living in a city. <laughs> um, there was there you were thinking really really hard about what it is that you wanted you felt inspired this is what i would the way i would like to see my life playing out over time this is what i would like to have this is the way i would like to see my life playing out and i feel like a big part a significant part of it was is a desire to have a quieter lifestyle it's a desire to have this like peaceful environment around you where there's not so much drama where you don't have to feel pressure to go 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 all the time and um so you've been thinking about it and the cards want you to know that that thinking about it in this case is almost enough there's there's a couple more things that you need to do but it all has to do with taking away the things that aren't working rather than adding more things to it hoping that that will help so it's saying embrace the quiet if that's what you desire. If you want to have a quieter lifestyle, stop doing the busy stuff. <laughs> stop doing the thinking. Quiet it down. Take it back a few notches. Just sit there and look out the window for a while if that's what it is that you desire doing. Well, it's not as simple as that, Michelle. You can't just do that. You gotta, what, what am I gonna do about making a living? How am I going to get, how am I going to meet a partner that's as peaceful and quiet as me if I never even leave the house because I'm like, I'm afraid of the stress of going on a date? Well, let's look at that here. Looking at your money issues, your resources, your abundance and prosperity. The first thing I wanted to do is get a little picture of what specifically is going on in your mind. And that's what all of these dark colored solace divinity cards are all about four different cards came out i was i was drawn to pull four cards out and there's a, a bunch of stuff going on <laughs> so these two in the middle are are really really good right there's like you know that you have a lot of good things going for you you've been putting in work you've been taking care of people outside of yourself and they kind of they they kind of owe you one 
right? <laughs> you're not you're not feeling like it's something like tit for tat. And I but I did something for you. Now you do something for me. That's not how you work, Pisces. But the truth is that if you needed to call in a favor, you could, right? If you need to transition from one f economic phase to another, there are some favors that you can call in from multiple entities, from the people that you love, uh, your family, your partner, if, if that resonates with you, you can be supported in, in uh, any transition that you need to make. But there's a part of you that's like, if I depend on other people, what happened before will happen again. And I, I, do, I do sense that for a lot of Pisces, they've been betrayed in the past. They've been in situations that put them, made themselves vulnerable in situations where um, they were at the mercy of people that were, did not have their best interests at heart because they just, you know, they wanna, they wanna help, right? They wanna be loving and kind and they wanna be loved, but then they ended up in these bad situations and Pisces doesn't wanna end up in that situation again. But, so there's that worry, that anxiety. And you know, when you, when you focus your anxiety on something, when you, when you focus on something with anxiety, it brings more anxiety. So you gotta, you gotta cut that out. <laughs> Whether you choose to take the path of being vulnerable or not, you got to cut out the anxiety regarding it. Okay. Now, here's the advice that the cards have for you in this specific situation because you know that it's time. You know that it's time for transition. Because when you're looking at what you're doing currently and what you have done in the past, you're like, it was, it was fine, it was good, not a terrible thing. However, I have learned everything I can from it and it doesn't feel great anymore. I feel like it, it just feels like the humdrum or it's just like a little bit too stressful. Just like, I'm not really satisfied. This is like itchy, ir irritable feeling that you have <laughs> when you think about the things that, when you think about the things that, that you're doing with your life currently, the way you, the way you work specifically. So you know that the change has to happen. That's what the death card is all about. It's about, it doesn't have to be about death and destruction, <laughs> like uh, the tower crashing things down. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be just a quiet transition. And that's what we're going for here. Now it's, it's saying that, um, it is time to do something. The Three of Wands is there. That's the final word. I pulled these little mini, mini cards out for the final word is that something has to be done. You do have to be, you have to do something, even if that's something, even if you, if you feel paralyzed at the thought of making the transition that needs to happen, then do nothing. Focus instead, when the anxiety starts coming in, I know this out of the Pisces rising, so I know this feeling that you're experiencing right now. When you think about, when you think about going to work the way that you always have gone to work, it brings a feeling of anxiety because you just don't like it. When you think about making changes, it brings anxiety because you're scared. So do nothing for a little bit only be for a couple of days. Do nothing and think nothing. <laughs> Doesn't that sound nuts? It's totally counterintuitive when it comes to what the, this, the, the line that we've been fed is that you have to do something. Well, that hasn't worked for you so far. And it, it's like, it leaves you spinning. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. And you're just thinking too hard about it. And it gets you nowhere. Instead, Hold your energy to yourself. Exhale quietly. And just spend a couple of days doing nothing. <laughs> Even if it means just laying in bed looking out the window. And get back to the point where you're starting to figure out what brings you pleasure. And I feel like, well, the cards are saying, that things are going to be moving quickly when you shift to not being in the anxiety. When you shift to knowing that you you just aren't going to know everything when it comes to what's coming next for you. You don't know. 
You don't know what's coming next for you, but you have some favors, right? I feel like you might have some savings in a bank account. You have some favors that people can come through for you for. Take advantage of that. And uh, even if it's just for a couple of days, get yourself to a place of peace and you're going to have the answer very clear on what to do next as you go through with that. And we're gonna check back in 12 days to see where you're at when it comes to that. But I think it's like the biggest thing is, is to not expect that you're, if you expecting to know all the answers has not done you any good, so stop doing that, okay? The answers will come in from somewhere else. If you give it a little bit of space and peace and change your attitude from anxiety to just peace and knowing that you are whole and complete and perfect exactly the way you are and you don't have to be working in order to prove that you have value. You'll work again. You will contribute to society. But right now you get, have to get back to how to do it in a way that brings you to a higher level and makes you feel really good. Now let's look at your love messages and remember that in these readings that I do, if what I'm talking about doesn't resonate with you, make sure and check with all the other signs in your chart, specifically your rising, your moon, your Venus, your Venus and Mars, because different parts of your chart will be highlighted at different times in your life. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so check out my readings or other, other tarot readers' readings for different signs in your chart. So looking at your love and connection, if everything was perfect and hunky-dory and you were in a relationship, uh, you know, you're in a great relationship, or if you're happily single and not concerned about love, then you wouldn't be tuning into this part. But you're tuning into this part because you're not perfectly happy in love. And the thing is, excuse me, mm, we got this six of swords here. We got this six of swords here. They're both here to talk about how um, it's like the inner world and the outer world that's happening. The times, the times that you were um, exiled from a relationship, betrayed, let down, stormy, a stormy environment that you had to escape from. A place, a place where you felt like either you could have been taken, taken advantage of for your soft, loving tender nature or it was just a lot of fighting and it broke your heart and so that that energy is still lingering in your vibration and it repels awesome connections from happening so we got the the, the devil and the three of cups that are both coming up in your emotional in your uh, intellectual and emotional space it's there it's it's hanging out and that has to do with addictive compulsive behaviors and if that's something that resonates with you specifically when it comes to be careful be careful about how much you drink because that that will interfere with your cognitive function with your ability to um watch to be able to catch red flags when they happen and otherwise like your whole um your ability to deeply connect with somebody is going to be blurry and so you, you won't be able to trust people because you can't see that they're that they have your best interests at heart and you can't see that somebody that you're with is untrustworthy so be very mindful about any kind of stimulant that clouds your um, or stimulant or, um, you know, something coming from outside of your body that clouds your judgment. Be very careful about that. So that's there, right? Um, this, the Knight of Wands came up twice, starting it, starting the love reading and ending the love reading. Now, I don't know if you got somebody coming in in the next 12 days or somebody who's come in recently, someone that you're not sure of their intentions because you are reflecting experiences that you've had in the past. You're not sure if they're gonna be flakes, but they are coming on strong. Or if there is, if you're not meeting this person, 
like any time that you put yourself out there, like say in the, for example, in the dating arena, <laughs> you're like somebody, somebody gives you a feed, a little bit of positive feedback and you're like, oh, then you get scared and you want to run away. It could be you a little bit too. That's like in, in a little bit out and then you run out. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> It's because you still have some healing to do. If you if you freak out <laughs> every time you start to become vulnerable with someone, that means you've got some healing to do still. So if that's an issue, it's okay. You can still date while you're healing. That's all right. The, the thing is to let your potential partner, the person that you're getting to know better or whatever, let them know that you're still healing from times before, you know, let open that, open that, that, that just like show your card about that. Say, I, I will need to set boundaries sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like, I just need to be left alone. Don't take it personally. I'm still healing from previous relationships. Okay. If you show that to them, that will go a long way toward healing. Oh, I love it. Because I feel like in the past, this is all coming out as I'm speaking, but I feel like in the past you were not allowed to be vulnerable. You were not allowed to be scared. So you were afraid that if you showed that you were afraid in a relationship, if you showed, if you held boundaries for yourself to protect yourself and keep yourself safe, you were afraid that they would leave you. And so you let them do whatever they wanted. You let them have their way in all aspects of the relationship. And I, this is really powerful as it's coming out of my mouth. It's just like, yes, that is absolutely what happened. You didn't have good boundaries in the past and now you're afraid as you're going into new connections. You're afraid that you're going to lose yourself again and you'll be tied up, right? You'll be tied up again with somebody else and it'll be so hard to get out of it again then it's important for you to prove to yourself that you are lovable even when you're a bitch or vice versa <laughs> if you're, or the other word other words for it if you identify as masculine um when you stand up for yourself you're still worthy of love as long as you do it in a respect kind respectful manner not like you're attacking me no 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 you're pushing too hard no 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 you just say i feel like I should be doing this right now. I'm going to get together with you later. You know, those, that's just, it's not that it's not something for them to take personally. It's what you need to do for yourself. And I feel like that's going to go a long way towards vetting anyone who could potentially be a red flag kind of person. Like if they don't respect your respectful assertion of discomfort, then they're not worthy of being in a connection with you. And also I need, I need to say, um, what was it that I was going to say? It was, it was there and I needed to finish my thought. Shoot. Well, let's see what the, what the wholeness affirmation has to say for us. I got these wholeness cards from the salvage sawhorse a couple weeks ago and I just love them. Pisces. Let's get going. Let's get going here. I release all worry and fear about things that are outside of my control and make space for new opportunities. So closing out this reading, let's remember that there are things that you can control. Oh, I remember what it was that I was going to say about relationships. It was that the first thing you need to know when you're getting in connection with somebody else. The first thing you need to do is know when you're feeling uncomfortable. When you, when like, be to be able to pinpoint the exact moment when you feel uncomfortable. In hindsight, you're like, shit, I wish I'd said something then, I guess it's too late. No, it's never too late to say, I felt uncomfortable with this. So you can always do that. But it's even better when you feel it when it happens, right? So that's something you can control. You can control saying, I feel uncomfortable with this. Regarding your money situation, your resource situation, your work situation, you can control whether or not you feel anxious or burdened by the work that you're doing or not doing, right? You can control whether or not you feel guilty about asking for help. Those are things that you can control, but there are a lot of things that you can't control. 
you can control you, right? You can control your own emotional space. So do that. Outside of that, let all the rest go. Because the, the more you try to control what's going to be coming to you, the less you're going to be available for new opportunities to come up. And I really feel like in this transition that you're going through, ouch, <laughs> in this transition that you're going, going through, some great new opportunities are going to be coming up. I'm really looking forward to how your reading, how your reading plays out in 12 days. So this is where I leave off, Pisces. I love you so much, and I'm so glad that we got to spend this time together. And I will see you 